Yeah. <laughs> Cadence through the ceiling is the vibe you give and running through my heart. Music drives my feelings. Hey, everybody, what's going down? It's your girl, Jay Renee. You know, I always got something to, something to say. And today, oh my God. I'm sorry because y'all, we got a legend in the mix today. Oh my goodness. But back call. You already know who it is. It's the one, the only Kelly Kilo. What's down with it, y'all? Y'all already know what it is. Kelly Kilo checking in. You hear me? Way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm rocking in. She called me. She needed the favor. I said, I'm coming to do it. Let's do it. Now you gotta tell me, coming from Baton Rouge, and you already making your—I mean, your name been hitting the street since Wicked Witch of the South. You know what Man. I'm saying? Yeah. Man, you they don't know me. about that one for real. Man. Yeah, y'all better get on Apple Music ASAP because you got to know to know. If you know, then you know. You feel me? You gotta mm -hmm. tell me. Talk to me about your journey within this industry. How you? How did you start? Man, see, it started. A long ass time ago, I probably I've been making music since I was like seven years old. Like I started with producing. I was making beats first because my daddy was a producer. He used to make beats all the time in the living room. So you know, I I decided to jump on and make my own beats. When I started making my beats, I was like, okay, somebody got to rap on these beats. So I started rapping on the beats, and I've been rapping ever since. Shoot, I've been really in the creative world ever since, like rapping. I ain't had nobody shoot my videos. I started shooting my own videos. I just really been all around creative since I was not even in double digits. It's really crazy. But the journey been amazing, man. It's finally paying off. I've been doing it so long. It's finally paying off. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing all. Look, I'm, I'm just, I'm just seeing all the good, the good things now. It, it took me a long time to get here, but. Hey, it's paying off right now. What was that moment when you said, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this seriously." Hmm. All right, I'm gonna say the moment I really started taking it serious, I probably was 19 years old. I was 19 or 20, and I had like five jobs. Like I was working, I was working, working them back to back. Like I was going from one job clocking out going to the other one. I was barely getting sleep. I was probably getting like an hour and 30 minutes to two hours of sleep a day because I was going job to job for days, like days in a row. And one day I just had like a little breaking point. I used to work in this bakery. I went in, started making the donuts and shit. And I'm just in that bitch. I'm like, man, I don't want to do this. And I quit all my jobs the same day, stopped showing up. Then I went and got a tattoo on my face and I was like, I'm never going to work a job again. <laughs> What? Like, you I was like, I got. I said, I got to blow now. I got to blow now. I got to take it serious. I got to blow now, cause I definitely can't get no job with these tattoos on my face. Which tattoo is the first tattoo? This one right here. It say bruja. It say witch in Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you're you're Dominican, right? Dominican and Puerto Rican. Okay. So, quick question: Is there any time that you would make a Spanish album? Okay, I got a lot of Spanish songs. That's what a lot of people don't know. They just not out. I got a Dominican artist. Like, he straight from Dominican Republic. He just moved to Louisiana. Like, and we got a lot of, we got a lot of them both songs. Like, we just ain't dropped nothing yet. I'm really trying to, I know my foot in the door, but I'm really trying to go ahead and keep saucing them up and juicing up with what I'm doing right now so I can drop everything on their head. Like, yeah, I'm really, I'm really that. I'm talented for real. I'm really creative. For a Spanish ride, would you work with that Mexican OT? Yeah, I fuck with him. He hard as hell. Hell yeah. I fuck with him. I fuck with dude. We had a show, we had a show together last year. He cool as hell. Talk to me about, you know, getting, you know, your audience like capturing your audience and actually, you know, building your audience up and stuff. So I'm going to say with my audience, how I, well, how I established a fan base, how, how, how I created a fan base really was, I'm really interactive. Like I like talking to people. I like meeting new people. I really go out in the world for real. And I meet a lot of people. And when I meet people, I tell them about myself. Like I do this, this, and this, I really got like a fun personality. So people already gravitate to me. So when I'm meeting when I'm meeting new friends or new people, I'm really making new fans along the way. Cause every time I meet somebody and they experience my energy and my personality, they're like they want to be involved in everything I got going on. So I say the way I really established my fan base is 
I moved to Dallas. I used to live in Dallas a couple of years ago. I moved to Dallas and I used to just go out to little parties and the clubs and I just used to start performing at them. So I established a, a heavy, heavy white fan base first. So a lot of people don't know this either. When you got white people behind you, you got the whole world behind you. That's all you need right there. Hey, Man. I went I went to a PWI college, so you ain't got to tell. This Look, ain't I, no, I, say, no. this another thing. <laughs> I, I don't know if you noticed, but I hang around LSU a lot. Like, I'm very involved with LSU athletics. I donate to the school a lot. I, I, the black student program, like, I donate once a year to them. Like, they do, like, a talent show, and I give away, like, $1,000 every year to, to somebody that's talented. So I'm heavily involved in, I, I really, I target my audience. That's what I do. I, I I go get them. I go get them for real. So it took me a long time to establish, establish like where I wanted to go or who I wanted to attract. But then I realized I make fun. I am fun. I make fun music. So I need to pull like that college crowd, that younger crowd. And then whoever else want to join in, they just join in. They fall in. Where did the name Cali Kilo come from? All right, so Cali Kilo come from. It's really crazy. So when I was in high school, actually when I was in middle school, I really had this obsession with this rapper named Honey Cocaine. And like, hey, I know about Honey I'm Cocaine. Say, yeah. I'm gonna say that was the days where you know everybody was just tagging cocaine at the end of their name and stuff, right? So I was, it was really Cali Cocaine because the Cali came from because. California, like that's why I came from California. But I live in the South where I came from California. So Cali came from there, but the cocaine, like I put I had cocaine at the end at first, so it's Cali cocaine. Then I was like, damn, I don't want nobody. If I blow, I don't want nobody to think like I'm copying honey cocaine. So I was like, what's another name for cocaine that'll be rolling? I was like, and I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about it, and then I think I Googled it and it said Kilo. So I was like, Cali Kilo. Now, this was probably like an eighth, eighth, ninth grade. This was a long time ago. I'm 26 years old. So I'm like, eighth, ninth grade. Like, hmm, what's another name for cocaine? Kilo. Cali Kilo was raw. That was it. And then all the dudes started calling me Kilo. All the girls started calling me Cali. So look, it just, it flew with it. Talk to me about being from Baton Rouge, but having your music still different yet still involving the Baton Rouge or Louisiana culture beat? So I'm going to say this. My music wasn't always involved in Baton Rouge. Like I w I'm still not, con to this day, I'm still not considered a BR artist. Like people don't think I'm a real BR artist, even though I I'm heavily influenced by BR and I'm from here and I, I put I, I put on for this bitch for real. People just don't consider me a real Baton Rouge artist, which is kind of insulting, but it's kind of it's kind it kind of make me feel like yeah, I'm really that at the same time because people people don't consider me a, a a local BR artist, and I felt played about that at first. I was like, damn, I had like a show at Southern a couple weeks ago. And they they got this little app that was talking on. It was like, damn, we can't even get a real BR artist to to come up here. Blah, blah. They was talking about me. I was like, damn, that's kind of fucked up because I feel like I'm a I'm I'm from this bitch. I put on for this bitch, but they don't consider me a real BR artist. Then I thought about it another way. I was like, that's actually kind of a compliment. So fuck it. But I say, I really ain't get the recognition in BR for real until I want to say until the last year and a half, which. People know me already because I had like a popular song when I was 16 in BR that was heavy in the clubs and we was throwing parties and stuff. And and people knew me because of that. They've been knowing me because of that. But I feel like in the last year, I probably got so much recognition because I actually did a viral song, a good song, a viral song on a Louisiana style instrumental. So and it 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 reached all the way across, like all the way across the United States. So I, I think people started. You know, clout chasers, they they're gonna hop on the bandwagon. I think oh yeah me at that at that moment for real, for real. But I feel like I would say it feel great to be recognized and put on for this bitch, but it also feel good to not be considered regular. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like 
I'm more of one of the I'm I feel like I'm more of one of like one of the main not mainstream, but I'm getting there. I'm I'm not local. If that makes sense. Oh no, I understand. I want you to talk to me about you know it's crazy. I got my water right next to me too. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I got my jug right here, right? <laughs> Look, I'm telling you. Talk to me about maybe some of the the pros and cons throughout your journey getting to this point. Like the the struggles, the highs and lows. All right. Struggle, highs and lows, pros and cons. I've been doing it so long. I, I'm gonna start with the cons first because it's, it's really so many. So I feel like my the number one con with me doing music is my image. My image has always been a problem. Not only my image, but with, well, this comes with image. A lot of I've always heard this my whole music career since I was probably 12 years old. I'm just not marketable enough. Like I remember my daddy used to take me to like his friends and people that are, are in the music industry and been doing music so long, he would take take me to them and be like, my daughter got talent, like what we got to do to get her a situation or, you know, get her working with y'all, something, something, something. And they, this, this would always, they would always say something along the lines of this. Well, first, she need to put on a dress. They have straight try to go to sexualizing me type shit. What the this hell? Like, right, which was, which was never my kick. So I feel like that's a big kind, especially for women in music. Like it's like they want you to be so appealing to the male eye. And that was never me. So I always had to work 10 times harder, whether it was with lyrics, being entertainment, entertaining, or just standing out with how the way I dress or whatever. I, I always had to like go extra harder. So I would say, um, damn, where I was going. I would say that's a big con. Um, another one is it's really just me being a I say being a woman is the biggest con in the music industry for real. Not only being a woman, but I'm a masculine appearing woman, and people still don't respect me as a lady when I always tell them like I'm a lady, treat me like a lady just because I dress the way I dress or I wear the hair the way I wear my hair, don't mean I'm a woman. I still like to be treated like a woman. And that's a big con. People treat me so aggressive and they just want me to be this, excuse my language, this nigga for real. And I'm just, I'm sensitive as fuck. Like, just like the rest of every female. I say another one is, it's just low expectations. Like, people don't think, don't expect me to be talented or good or anything like that. Pros, let me go. I said, buku con, let me do some pros. In a world full of cons and pros. I can't even name that many. Like, I feel like every, I, I can't even name, like, I can't even think of none for real. Like, just because it's so many cons. Why do you think that in this industry, they, they even though women, we, we could push however hard we can, but why do you think they're stuck on this whole sexuality of women? Because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a power game. Men have power. A lot of women don't have power. It's like, it's not only a power game, it's a money game. Men have power and money. And even when women have money and power, it's still, I mean, they don't show them no respect. I feel like it's just a sexualization game because it's just, embedded it's embedded in the culture now it's been like this since like what the 1930s like even if you watch movies and listen to music back to the 1930s women have always been over sexualized it's just because it's a man's world for real like they only do shit that please they they want to see shit that please them it's it's a power game it's power politics all that all that extra shit one thing i do like about you as an artist is your transparency to you as a person like, you are like, hey, I do dress masculine, but at the same time, treat me like a lady. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I can take your nigga, and I can take your bitch. Okay. <laughs> I say that a lot. I'm very sassy, and I, I, I say that a lot. Like, my real friends, 
my real friends know, like anybody that know me for real, especially the girls, they know like I'm just so super, I'm super feminine, like super, super feminine. Like, and a lot of women, I feel like the girls that don't me, a lot of girls think I'm a hoe because I hang around so many women, but I hang around so many women because I am a girl. I'm a girl's girl for real. Like I'm so sassy. Like I'll be in the tea. I'll be like, bitch, swear to God. Like, like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a super sassy person. Like my friend, no, if you know, you know, that's why I don't like explaining too much shit on the internet. Like when they be in my comments and shit, I just like, fuck, if you know me, you know me. Like, I don't know. I mean, everybody judge a book by its cover. I can't. It's not my. It's not my job to change your opinion of me. I just. I'm here. Whatever floats your boat. Hey, speaking of whatever floats your boat, man, when you came out with, bum, ba, da, da, bum, run it back. I was like, okay, all right. And then you know you got you had Erica Bates, you had Fred on there, and I'm just like, oh, it got. Oh, this. Oh, she came with it for real, for real. Tell me, how did that? How did that go down? So, a lot of people don't know, Fredo Bang is my cousin, and Erica Banks is, like, one of my closest friends, like, my ace boom coon for real, like, that's that's my dog for real, like, I, I'll beat a bitch up for her, like, we'll fight bitches together. So, really, it was really perfect timing, because I wasn't... I wasn't going to get nobody on the song, but it was just so perfect timing because I know Fredo, like one of his baby mamas is, I'm not going to say she's a stud no more, but she is a former stud. And and Erica, she just the rawest rap bitch out. So I was like, I got to put her on that bitch. Fredo fitted, fitted for perfect timing. He definitely, he, what's the, what they say? Um, He handled the task accordingly, like, he did what he was supposed to do. He ate that bitch. And Erica just came on that bitch and she killed it for the girls. So look, it was it was perfect timing for real. Like it I it wasn't supposed to happen. Like I really got so many remits. I put so many people on that song. Like I got so many verses that people don't even know about. Will you like release those? Mm, I'm still in the process of thinking about it. I ain't even gonna lie. Like I might release a, a remixes album with a lot of remixes. I just don't know. I, I ain't even thought about it yet. I feel like you're like Nipsey Hustle. Like a lot of people don't know because at the time when I interviewed Jay Stone, he said that it was more songs than we could even imagine that's in the uh -huh. vault that they will slowly release. And I'm just like, what's hey, that then? Well, you like, know, me, <laughs> me and Nipsey are Leos. So that might be, that's that, one thing. That must be a Leo thing. They got to be a Leo thing. thing. I'm a Taurus. I hate Taurus, girl. Oh, I'm, my God. No, we're not. You know, it's it. crazy. Like, today the eclipse happened, and it was like the eclipse supposed to be the best thing for the Taurus. And, like, girl, I was so anxious all day because all I did, I be dating Taurus women, and Taurus women is scary. Hold up. I mean, they, hold up. Hold up they scare me, girl. I, I have uh, to... I had to block a girl today because I didn't want her to ruin my Eclipse energy. I had to block her because she was a Taurus and she was trying to ruin my day. I kept telling her, today is not the day, girl. It is the Eclipse today, can we recoup tomorrow? Today is not the day, don't bother me. Taurus is just, girl, crazy. Throw it off. Scared of them. No, first off, we not throw it off. Honestly, if you give us what we want, we cool. That's it. Don't matter what it is. Allow me to take my nap. Allow me to eat. They want communication so bad, but communicate so well. Like, it don't make sense to me. That's funny, because my degree is in communication. <laughs> I'm joked. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, Taurus is just... I feel like Taurus and Geminis need to be together. They're the worst signs of the Zodiac. I hate Geminis. I can... One of my close guy friends, he's a Gemini. Then I had a close friend who was a girl. She was a Gemini. But we don't talk about Gemini. so. Hey, Gemini. <laughs> hey, Taurus, girl. May, look, look, look. May, May or April? May 8th. Oh, that's worse. That's my ex birthday. <laughs> what? Oh my. oh, my God. She beat me up. She beat me up in public and it went viral. Crazy thing is, I almost got into a fight today. See, that's that eclipse. Oh, my God. Not the Taurus text me right now and said, Oh, not trying to fuck your energy up. Go! Oh, 
<laughs> As we speak, I'm not lying. Look, I'm putting it. The... Hey, you need to make a song, bro. You need to make a song right now. You need to make a song. Girl, let me take that because I love her for real. But Taurus, y'all are crazy. First of all, we're impossible to hate. I just want to put that out there. Who you know that's a Taurus that really just hates us? Nobody. That's our other signs. Y'all think too much. Now, as long as my money good, the people in my circle good, and I got good food, and I can take a nap, oh, that's it. That's it. However, if you get on that bad side, I'm on her bad side right now, girl. She's, I kid I you not. I told my mom. Don't even make no sense. I accuse you now. I tell my look, mom. I can't deal with no. Look, I'm stressing. I just think about it. Just no, look. man, breathe, breathe. <laughs> breathe right, next man. question. The eclipse over my anxiety gone. I had anxiety earlier. That bitch had me feeling heavy. Have, you weren't tired earlier? The eclipse ain't make you feel tired? Not gonna lie. I was rubbing my eyes, but I couldn't rub them too hard because I got individual lashes on. But I my was still rubbing my crazy. eyes. It felt like somebody had their hand around my throat. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I walked outside and got so heavy, and I was like, because I tried to go to the gym and work out. I got to the gym, girl. I couldn't even work out. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I just came back home. And I couldn't fuck with it. You know, you just need a Taurus in your life. That's crazy. Because Tauruses, we do make everything better. But, you know, that's that's fact. That's not opinion. That's a fact. But on to the next question. <laughs> you got to tell me, how um, have you started touring? And if you have, how's the tour life? So I'm not on a tour tour right now, but I do got a lot of shows booked up. So I've been traveling a lot and performing a lot. Uh, I get surgery next week, so I'm about to be out for a month. But when my month over, I still got a lot of shows lined up. So um, I get surgery next week and I come back. I, well, I start performing again on May 17th and it's going to jumpstart in Oakland. So I'm going to be doing shows throughout May by June, I know I'm, I'm usually always booked up June for Pride, a lot of Pride events. So July, I'm going to try to be like either planning or starting a tour, which I got this crazy idea I want to do with this all girls tour with a lot of my female friends as headliner artists. So I'm really working on getting all the details of that together. But I do have hella shows, hella, hella shows. How was it? performing your first show were you nervous were you a little anxious were you like mm, I don't know or were you like man I'm about to go out there and I'm about to kill this shit I think that even when my first show was I was real young I was probably I'm gonna say my first real show I was 14 I was probably 14 my first real show and I was nervous I was real nervous because I wasn't rapping about the same shit I was rapping about now. When I was 14, I was rapping about making a change in the community and rapping about Martin Luther King had a dream. <laughs> it, it was just not the for the where I live and rapping about Martin Luther King have a dream in Baton Rouge in front of a Baton Rouge audience and a crowd. Girl, that was not fucking with that. That was ready to knock in Buck in that bitch, and I'm in that bitch rapping about Martin Luther King had a dream. It was so crazy because I remember my first show, like it was yesterday, actually. I'm rapping about Martin Luther King having a motherfucking dream in this bitch and changing and changing uh the community and shit for us right now. And these motherfuckers started fighting in the crowd. It was tearing it down. Martin interrupted. did dream. Martin did dream about that. Interrupted my whole set. They stopped, broke up the fight, and I had to start that bitch all the way back on. I remember that bitch went like this. I had a dream. I, I had a dream. Like Martin Luther King, mm -hmm, I had a dream, some shit like that. I was rapping the fuck out that bitch. I was like, yeah, this shit go hard. I had made the beat and everything. They was not fucking with it. So they just like throw bubbles. They and that bitch fighting like they ain't got no home training. And we like 14, 15 years old. This is a kid's show. <laughs> you rap about something informational about you know what it could be. At that moment, at that moment right there, I knew right there, I did not need to be making positive music. 
on my mom, on my soul. I knew I was like, I gotta rap about something they want to hear about. Then next year I made a hit song, and that bitch went platinum in the teen clubs. That bitch was called "Fall Off in the Party." It was a party song, and I'm rapping about sh shaking ass, shake some ass. I swear to God. And they was with it. It was with it. <laughs> it was with it. I mean, it's, 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 shaking hard. Ass. it's hard to fight with a song like that. I mean, it's hard to fight. You either gonna bounce or you gonna. And being bro, it. being in br and from br 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 music. It's fight songs. Like they'll play my song sometimes right now, and they'll fight to the club, and they'll be like, "Damn!" I'm saying, "Bum da 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 bum y'all, bing bing bow bam bam." That shit crazy. <laughs> no cap, like it be, it don't make no sense. Can't do nothing positive around this bitch. Talk to me about having your songs go viral on such a global scale. Hmm. I'm going to say this. Before I post, this is why I don't post a lot. Before I post, whatever I post, and I when I post, I know it's going to go viral. That's why I post it. I don't post a lot of videos. A lot of people don't know. I don't, I don't, don't pay attention. I don't post a lot of videos. I don't post a lot of songs. Not for real. I just started because I feel like I be leaving my fans hanging. But... Only time I would post is if I knew something was gone, cause controversy, and make people be like, what the fuck, and send it to other people and be like, what the fuck is this? That's why, I mean, that's that's why I post. That's how I post. So, shit, I already knew them bitches. The, the songs that went viral, I didn't know Pornhub was going to go viral. I'm not going to lie about that one. I wasn't going to drop that song. It took, what? I've been, I've been learning this shit for a year. So what I just said is because I just learned from a year just by working with the algorithm and shit and and, and trying different shit. Poor Hub, I was never going to drop that song. It was a joke. It was a joke. Never, ever was going to drop that song. So Well, joke's on you because it's viral. What's crazy <laughs> is me and my homegirl was supposed to make a song on that beat because me and my homegirl, we was doing shows. I was bringing her to shows with me and me and her was going to make a song on the beat. And she ended up, some because somebody gave me the beat, his name played, but he gave me the beat and I sent her the beat. She ended up putting somebody else on the beat, which he a big Baton Rouge artist. And I kind of felt played about it. So I went and recorded over the whole beat. That's really how I made the song. So I recorded over the whole beat I didn't think the song was tight. It wasn't my style. I didn't think it was hard. It was a joke. I did it because you tried to take my beat and get it. No offense. That's my dog still. You tried to take my beat and try to put somebody on that bitch while I told you me and you was going to do the song. So I just went and wrapped over the whole thing myself. So I had the song five, six months before I even dropped it. Like, it just was the song I listened to the car. And it wasn't a full song. It was just the bomb. Da -da. It was a big strike. It was only that part. It never had a verse. I ended up getting real drunk one night, getting home at 6 a.m. and blowing my engineer phone up like I want to go to the studio and going to the studio at 9 a.m. and winning that bitch and laid a verse down. I hit that little hole from the back. I had a begging for the, like, all on some drunk shit. And then I... Posted that little snippet. I was in LA. I was like, damn, I don't post on TikTok no more. I posted that little snippet on TikTok that was recorded by, uh, I was at a content house by myself. Posted the snippet on TikTok. That bitch had 400,000 views when I woke up. It was crazy. And I was like, damn, this must be the one. I dropped that bitch. I knew, I knew, I knew it was, I knew I had to drop it because Mona Leo commented on it. And Baby Tate commented under it. And then a lot of other significant female artists commented under it. And it was like, this is the type of music we need. And they really woke my eyes up. I was like, damn, maybe I do need to be the voice of the people. And went from there. I've been working with, I've been working with that little play for a year. Every time I drop some shit about me being gay and rapping about being gay and what it's like to be gay and what it's like to be a woman that pull bad bitches, they love it. 
So yeah, what are what are your thoughts about you know being a part of the LGBTQ community, especially in this industry? Uh, my thoughts about being a part of the LGBT community in this industry is we really just it's it's we regular people. People don't treat us like regular people, but we regular people. It's kind of like we the same as uh what's the goddamn words? I don't even know the goddamn words. Cisgender? Is that yeah. regular? Yes, yeah, cis. Oh, look at me. See, I don't even know the terms. It's so <laughs> many they be it'd it be some new shit every day. Like I, I still be learning myself. Like I don't know. We we the same as cisgender people. Like, damn, like y'all gotta treat us regular. We as regular people and we talented just like y'all. Oh, damn, we just we just we trying to find our market. We finding our market now. I mean, we we get one month out of the year to really turn up and and go hard. But we trying to show them like we could be on the on the same main industry level as y'all. Like some people did, like Young and May did it, but I don't think she's doing it how I'm doing it. I'm doing it harder. I'm I'm just voicing. I'm being the voice for real. Like we people, it's it's it ain't nobody ever stood up for us, and I feel like. I'm definitely standing up for the community. You know what I'm saying? Like, even with people like, um, you know, they got gay artists and lesbian artists, but ain't nobody voicing for the community. They just had a type. Like, that, like that transparency. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really, I'm real open. Like, I'm a real open person. So I just, I love to talk about all my experiences and what I experienced in life because you never know if it's, Somebody else might have had something like they having to them. So they're like, damn, they not the only one. Y'all not the only one. Shit, I've been through that shit too. So, What's next for Cali Kilo? Ooh, that's such a broad question. What's next? We finna turn up. We about to go crazy. Like, y'all thought I went crazy this past year. We finna go crazy for real. I got some big features coming. I got some big songs coming. I got some... I just got... Just get ready for the experience. That's what I want to call it. Y'all finna, y'all finna have the experience of a lifetime. Just tune in, lock in with me. You will not be disappointed. And before we leave, go ahead and tell people where they can reach you. Like if they have some beats they want to send to you, all that good stuff. All right, y'all. So look, Instagram handle at Pretty Girls Love Kilo. You can find me on Instagram anywhere. Twitter, I don't be on it that much. When I get on there, I'll be crying. In. But y'all can go follow me if y'all want to see how my brain really operate on there. It's just regular Cali Kilo. YouTube, Cali Kilo. TikTok, Pretty Girls Love Kilo. Email, bookcalikilo at gmail.com. Y'all can send me beats, but I ain't gonna lie. I hate going through beats. But y'all can send me beats. Only send it if it's fire, because I do also make my own beats. So with that being said, that's me. That's where y'all can find me at. Hey, if you need a producer tag, I got you. I do those too. Oh no, cap! Hey, for real, for real. That. I gotta think of something. I gotta think of something for you to say. I'm fucking with that. Hey, I got you. Hey, yo, hit my line after this. Hit my line for real. For I real. got you. I got you. You got my direct contact number. You can test me whenever. Real quick, can you give a shout out to Jay Renee and the Talk with Me podcast before we go? You already know what's going on. It's Kelly Kilo checking in. Shout out to Jay Renee and the Talk with Me podcast you already know how it come when we come down thank you so much kelly kilo legend in the building you already know say that bad ruins but don't get it twisted she worldwide hey making big noise making the world pop y'all better if you don't know you better understand you better recognize right now this is talk with me podcast we coming back every week y'all make be sure to like share and of course subscribe exclusively on youtube hey hey everybody what's going on it's your girl jay renee you know i've got something to say bringing you new episodes and new guests all you on talk with me podcast exclusively on youtube like share and of course subscribe and follow us on ig too all right y'all bye